Hello everybody, this is Tekka. In this video, what we are going to be doing is showing you how truly easy it is to turn your Raspberry Pi into a retro gaming console. And we're going to be doing this with a popular Raspberry Pi operating system called RetroPie. RetroPie gives you the availability to emulate a ton of different retro consoles, including the Atari, Dreamcast, Game Boys, various Nintendo devices, older computers, and much much more. This Raspberry Pi 4 that I have here is absolutely phenomenal for emulating Sony PlayStation 1 games and that is my preferred use case. The actual RetroPie operating system is simply a Debian based loaded with a bunch of customized features to make it a complete system. These include Emulation Station, Retro Arch, Kodi, and of course various themes that you can actually go ahead and pick from. So in this video I'm going to be talking about some of the prerequisites that you're going to need to uh, consider as well as how to actually install this on your Raspberry Pi, set up your controller, and then uh, load in a couple ROMs. Now, speaking of ROMs, I am going to have to note here that just downloading like Nintendo games from the internet is going to be a violation of their terms of service and various copyright laws. If you want this to all be completely fine and legal, you're going to have to rip and load in copies of your physical games. I'm not going to be showing you how to do that in this video, but a quick Google search will lead you into the correct path to go ahead and rip the content that you already own. And of course, here and there, there are materials on the internet in which you can download copyright free games, ROMs, things like that. So now onto the things that you are going to need. Of course, you're going to need a Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi 4 again is awesome for the uh, PS1 and 64 generation emulation. If you go a generation higher, PS2, for example, it does, there's some games that work, but it does struggle. There's actually going to be a video in the future where I do get that working on a x86 device. So make sure you're subscribed and you Ring that bell so you do not miss that. Of course, you are going to need an SD card, preferably of substantial size. RetroPie requires eight gigabytes just to function properly. And then from there, it's gonna be dependent on the actual amount of games that you want to load. One thing to consider, older games such as uh, the Super Nintendo and a lot of the Atari games are very small, like five to 10 megabytes. But when you get into things like PlayStation 1 games, those are on CDs, so they can range anywhere from like 500 to 700 megabytes. Now from there you could tell I have a pretty cool case here. I got this case from a company called GeekPi and it's super cool. It's a little mini tower PC. As you can see, it does ship with a RGB fan and whole heatsink cooler system. If you saw my previous video going over cooling on the Raspberry Pi, you probably know that having a heatsink and fan like this will give you much better performance over just having a Raspberry Pi sitting there with absolutely nothing and even a much better performance than just throwing on a little heatsink. This case is cool because it has a little screen. I don't have the screen set up yet, but you could display things such as the temperature, CPU usage, things like that on there. I have full access to just about everything. The little SD card's kind of hard to get to in here. But one thing I really like is on this side, there came with a little L bracket so you could actually have these pins exposed so you could still have access to them. Very nice. You don't necessarily have to use a case, but it's much better to have something like this or even, or even a little can of kit case like this, which again does have a fan. Now obviously you're going to need your power, your HDMI, and most important, you're going to need some kind of controller. Me, I've been using Xbox 360 controllers for gaming for quite a while, so that is generally my preference. However, depending on the system you're trying to emulate the most, you might want to get a specific controller for that. If we go over to Amazon here and just search up RetroPie controller, it's going to give us a whole bunch of different types of consoles. For example, here we can see this is Super Nintendo. And if we go down even further, we have the original Nintendo system. We have some N64. And a lot of this stuff is, well, all of this stuff should be USB and even some of it. As you can see, we have wireless Super Nintendo controllers. Super cool stuff. I'll link to some of the better stuff down below that you could go ahead and check out. But before we get too far, this video was made possible by Internext. Internext is a open source cloud providing service for your files and photos. And it is secure by designing, meaning that your files are fragmented and encrypted before leaving your device. Thus, everything is private by default. They have applications for Windows, Mac, and mobile devices. And of course, they have their web drive in which you can access on Linux and basically anything else. Overall, their web user interface is clean, snappy, and it has all the features that you'd expect out of a basic service like this. I personally have been using it quite a bit for my photo backups here, which I've backed up all my photos using their little application here for Android. 
And of course, due to the nature of the project, you could actually check out their repository on GitHub to see their mobile applications, servers, and so forth. So if you are interested, they actually have a free 10 gigabyte plan that you could sign up for right now using the link down below. And if you're interested on in some more storage, use the code TECHHUT to get 25% off any of their annual plans. So big thank you to Internex for sponsoring this video. So once you have just about everything you're gonna need, we're gonna go over to the RetroPie website here, and we could go ahead and click on Get RetroPie. Here we have our various options. So if you have an older Raspberry Pi, you can pick those. We have the Raspberry Pi 4 or 400 here, and there are options to install this on top of existing operating systems. Gonna talk about, I'm gonna talk about that in a future video. For now, let's go ahead and download the version for the Raspberry Pi 4, which is what I'm gonna be using here. So now it's down Loading. So depending on your system, you could flash this with either Etcher or you can use something like a GNOME Discs if you're on a Linux system. Now, alternatively to that, if we head over to the Raspberry Pi website, they actually have the Raspberry Pi Imager, which is a great tool if you're somebody who owns a Raspberry Pi. For example here, this is the actual Imager that I have installed on the computer. If I go ahead under Operating System and I click Choose OS, of course I could go ahead and pick Raspberry Pi OS, but if you actually go down here and you go to Emulation and Game OS, give that a click, we have the option right here to go ahead and pick RetroPie. So from there, I'd want to go ahead and pick the proper one. So this is going to be for the Pi 4 400. From there, I go to choose storage. I already have that SD card plugged in. So I'm going to select it. And then all I need to do is click on write. Now do know, of course, it is going to completely wipe the data on that SD card. So if there's anything important, go ahead and back it up somewhere else. And from there, I'll go ahead and download and you can see there it is now writing our image. And then here we can see you can now remove the SD card from the reader. So there are no issues. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug that, get our little SD card, and then all you need to do is insert it into your Raspberry Pi. And now all we need to do is set this up. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in our controller, our HDMI, and then of course our power. Now the very first thing when you first boot it up, it's going to go ahead and resize the root file system. That is very handy because just a normal flash like that to an SD card is not going to give us full access to all the storage we have available. So now that it does that automatically for us, we will have access to actually have room to put our ROMs and RetroPie. So if you see this screen, you're definitely on the uh, right track. And then we have Emulation Station loading up and you can kind of see some of the uh, games that's loading there. And now, welcome. So we already went ahead and plugged in our Xbox controller. This should recognize any USB controller gamepad device that you go ahead and plug into it. When I go ahead and hold this, you're gonna briefly see it say Xbox uh, or Microsoft Xbox gamepad, and then you're gonna go ahead and actually map out your buttons. And you just press the corresponding button to do that. So we have D-pad up, down, left, right, start, select. And now depending on your controller, this might not match up. Oh, we all know the A button's actually south but with a lot of the Nintendo games and whatnot, you're just gonna to want to kind of follow it with the East, South, North, and not the actual letters. So East, South, North, West. So now we're gonna go left, right, left, right. And then this is the thumb. So we're gonna to want to uh, push the left thumb, push the right thumb, up, down, left, right, up, down, left, right. And hotkey enable is going to be the Xbox button. And then go ahead and hit the, uh, well, what you mapped as A, it's actually going to be B on this controller. So I'm going to go ahead and hit B to go ahead and continue. And there we go. We are now in our system. There's no ROMs or anything, so it's not going to detect anything in here. But we'll get to that in a minute. First, what we're going to want to do is go into the RetroPie configuration. And the very first thing is going to connect to Wi-Fi so we can actually go ahead and load ROMs and actually connect to the device with our home network. And to do this, we're going to want to start off by going to the RaspPi config. So go ahead and select that. And then here we are. There's a lot of different things that we could change in here, but what we're going to want to focus on first is the localization option. So go ahead and hit over and A to select that. And right here under WLAN country, you're going to have to select this before you're able to connect to Wi-Fi. So over, select, and then I'm gonna go all the way down and if you use the uh, trigger buttons, it will actually skip you ahead a little further and quicker. So I'm gonna find my country, which happens to be the United States. So select that, country set to US, continue. And now one thing we could do real quick before we connect to Wi-Fi is go over here to display options. Here you can set your resolution. Later on, I'm gonna give you a tip 
because if you try to plug this into a 4K display, it might not want to work right, because in 4K, you're gonna to want to downscale that to at least 1080p for it to actually function properly. But what we're gonna be focusing on right now is underscan, so removing these black borders around the screen. That's kind of important if you're doing this on like an older, uh, what is it, CVTV? I think, I could be wrong, the ungodly heavy ones. So I'm gonna go over, select, would you like to enable compensation for delays with overscan? I'm gonna say no and continue. And for now, I'm gonna go ahead and save what we've done so far. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to finish here. And would you like to reboot? Whenever it asks you this, just, just do it. So let's go ahead and reboot our system. All right, so our system has rebooted. Let's go back into the RetroPie configuration and actually connect to our Wi-Fi. So we're gonna to want to go all the way down here to the bottom, Wi-Fi, and here we go. So we're gonna to want to connect to a Wi-Fi network. It's gonna scan for our networks. Let's go ahead and connect to Hopkify, and I'm gonna type in my password. So we're gonna uh, skip or blur this. There we go. And a really cool thing is that they actually have this now, so you don't have to plug a keyboard into it. I haven't plugged a keyboard or mouse into this at all. All this is done with this Xbox controller. So let's go ahead and go okay. There we go, it's connecting and we have our IP address. So I'm gonna uh, write that down real quick. So from there we could go to exit and I do believe that's everything that we need to do for now when it comes to the actual configuring of everything. Oh, almost forgot, go back into the RASP config and we need to enable SSH. So I believe it is under interface options, SSH right here. So let's go ahead and select that. And yes, we do want to enable SSH. So there we go. And now what we're gonna be doing is switching over to FileZilla on the computer. FileZilla is a wonderful file transfer application. Here it is. I've been using this application probably since I could turn on a computer. So what we're gonna to want to do is go SFTP semicolon forward slash forward slash and then that IP address. And then for the username, it's going to be pi and the password is going to be raspberry. So from there, let's go ahead and hit quick connect and this is indeed our Raspberry Pi, so this is going to be a safe connection. And there we go, you can see RetroPie, RetroPie setup. You can access a lot of the configuration and just about everything through here if you'd like to. The thing to really keep note of, if we go over to RetroPie, and then right here under ROMs, this is where all those are gonna be stored, and you can see all the different games. So we have a NES, N64, PSX is gonna be the PlayStation 1, so on and so forth. Additionally, you may need to load in extra BIOS, and this is gonna be the place you do that. So within FileZilla, what I did real quick is I migrated over to some of the games. You can see I have some PSX as well as some NES games, and we're just gonna be dropping those over into our Raspberry Pi. So we go over to ROMs, let's do the NES game first, so, or SNES, so you're gonna to wanna to go down right here. If I open up this folder, you can see I have two of them, Donkey Kong Country and Super Mario All-Stars, and all we do is drag and drop them in there and boom. You can see, like I mentioned earlier, they are incredibly small files, just a couple megabytes, and this is in comparison to these PlayStation 1 games I'm about to drop in. If I open up PSX, you can see we have quite a few things here. We have some Crash Bandicoot and Pac-Man World and Spyro the Dragon. I'm showing you this because there's kind of three different things going on here for these PlayStation 1 games. Most of these are gonna be in .bin, which are the actual binary files. And depending on music and what the actual games consist of, there might be track files. So you can see here, this Pac-Man world has multiple track files that all make up that one game. Additionally, Spyro the Dragon here is a direct ripped image. So that's another format you may run into. Images do not need a Q file, which you can see Pac-Man and Crash Bandicoot have a Q file, which is how RetroPie is actually gonna be able to read the binary. If you don't have a Q file when you go ahead and rip your disks, it's really easy to get one of those. Just search up like PS1 Q generator and it, you'll find it. They're pretty simple files. So I'm gonna go ahead and select all of these and drag and drop it on over. Additionally, if you ever see these SRM files, those are save files. So if you ever want to back those up for your specific game saves, that is how you're gonna to want to do that. And we can see here that the last game, Spyro the Dragon, is just about loaded up onto RetroPie. There we go. So what we're gonna do is hit the start button real quick and here we could go ahead and go to quit. 
and restart the system. And actually just restarting emulation station should be able to load up these games for us. And when it does boot, we should have some more options which you can see here. We have PlayStation and Super Nintendo. So for example, if I go over to PlayStation here, we have Crash Bandicoot, Pac-Man World, and Spyro the Dragon. So for example, let's go ahead and load up Crash Bandicoot and hope for the best. If it doesn't work for you the first time, just reinstall it, try again. And then if it still doesn't work, it's probably something to do with your rip. We can see that it loaded up the gamepad. When you see those things in the bottom there, that's when you know that th things are working in your favor. Wait for all these to go by. And look how beautiful that is. We are in, we are playing, life is good. Oh, I should have jumped on that one. This right here is what I grew up on. This and uh, like PlayStation 2, uh, Jack and Daxter, Ratchet and Clank. That was a, uh, oh, <laughs> that was a good majority of my childhood. Now, if you're in a game and you just want to kind of force quit and get out right away, hitting the, um, I think it's like the hotkey button and start, depending on the controller, at the exact same time, will go ahead and take you out like so. Now, this doesn't look very good. So what I'm gonna do real quick is show you how to use the scraper. Hit the start button. You can see it's the first option. So I'm gonna select scraper. Scrape from the uh, game database usually is completely fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and go scrape now. We have a filter, so only missing image. We have two systems selected. So I'm gonna go ahead and start. And what this is gonna do is pull various metadata. So like the game cover art, descriptions, release date, things like that. So it went ahead, found Crash Bandicoot, and you can kind of pick whatever one you prefer. So that's a Japanese version. So I'm probably gonna go with this one right here. When you select it, it's automatically gonna go to the next game. So we have Pac-Man World, select that. Spyro the Dragon, and you can see if I go down, it just kind of changes the uh, cover art. We have Greatest Hits, Platinum here but I'm gonna go ahead and go with this first one. Now these are some NES games, so uh, Donkey Kong Country, that looks good to me. And then last but not least, Super Mario All-Stars. You can see five games successfully scraped, okay. So I'm gonna back out of there, and now you can see it's, it's looking a lot better. Pac-Man World is truly an underrated game. I mean, why would anybody not want to play 3D Pac-Man? I just don't understand. Doo -doo -doo. I spent so much time playing this. I think when I originally played this, I found it at a Goodwill, because it was a PlayStation 1 game. I had a PlayStation 2 at the time, and it was one of the best finds of my entire life. So with that, I do have uh, two more little uh, quick tips for you. Now earlier I did mention that I was having issues downscaling the resolution on a 4K display. There's actually something I needed to manually add in the configuration file to allow me to do this, and I'm going to show you that real quick. So this is my terminal. I'm going to go ahead and SSH directly into this, so that way I can run commands and I can actually uh, interface with the uh, system properly. So SSH and this is gonna be at pi, or the pi user at the IP address, which in my case, this is my IP, so I hit enter. I type in yes, and then type in that password. So that's raspberry, make sure you type it in right. And there we go. So now what we're gonna to want to do is go ahead and edit the config.txt. And I do believe that is in the root directory. If I ls in there, we have the boot folder. Let's go ahead and cd into boot. If we ls again, you can see right here is the config.txt. Now, being that this isn't in our home directory, we're gonna to have to do this as super user. So it's gonna be sudo nano, nano is a text editor, and then we have config.txt. We may need to enter our password, but in that case, I did not need to do that. Now, you'll see here a lot of the same stuff that's in the rasp config menu on our actual system. Now, what I went ahead and added, thanks to a, a post on Reddit, is this right here. HDMI underscore ignore underscore EDID and then this code. I'll go ahead and leave that down below. So if you're having issues, you can input that. Control O to save it out. Enter. Control X to exit out. Restart and see if you have the same issues. And if you are unaware, you can change your resolution by going to RASP config, going to display options, go to resolution, and here you can set a specific resolution. Uh, if you're running 4K, I do recommend put it at 1080p. You're going to have a much better time. I mean, it's retro games. You don't need it at 4K. Additionally, something I mentioned, if you, for some reason, quickly run out of storage when you know you have more, what we could do is go to the, I think it's under advanced options. And there it is, expand file system. So you just select that. 
and then it's going to run through the process of doing that. You can see the root file system has been resized. So that is just one thing that you could do if you run into any issues. And really, that's about it. You now have your retro console set up where you can play all your old games in one convenient place. If you're interested in some more types of videos around this, uh, please let me know down below in the comments. Or if you have any questions or if this has just helped you out, please let us know down below. Uh, like always, we have a weekly newsletter that I do recommend you subscribe to. There'll be a link to do that down below. And there's an option, a paid option, if you're interested in supporting the channel in that way. The text version of this entire video will also be linked down below on the same website that hosts the newsletter. Uh, so with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.